Micro livestock. Mm. Can't quite describe the flavor, but. <laughs> Okay, I keep running into stuff like this on the internet. Get ready to eat bugs if you want to live beyond 2050. If we want to save the planet, the future of food is insects. Are insects the new sushi? A novelty snack? Think again. Get ready for it. Eating bugs is our future. And I didn't really take it too seriously until recently they opened up North America's largest cricket farm not too far from me here in Canada. Correction, sorry. The world's largest cricket farm. And the plan is for it to feed human beings. So today I want to talk about this idea that the future of food is insects. And I think what's being proposed here is not just that we'd be eating some insects, but lots of insects. Insects instead of meat. Zero meat, only bugs. That's what the proposal seems to be. At least that's what it seems would be necessary to save the planet or whatever it is these articles are calling for. And I just wanted to say that, um, yeah, that's insane. And uh, I just want to rant for a moment about my issues with this as a proposal. But before we get into it, a message from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Established Titles. One thing you may not know about me is that I'm Scottish on both sides of my family. And one thing that I didn't know is that landowners in Scotland are actually called lairds or lords and ladies. Established Titles is a project based on this historic Scottish custom. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so that they can legally call themselves a lord or lady. Yes, it's absolutely legit. I recently purchased one for my dad for Father's Day. My dad loved it so much, he thought it was so funny. And when I explained to him that he could actually change his name to Lord officially, he he loved it. Each title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Then by officially being a landowner in Scotland, you can officially call yourself a lord or a lady. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. You could even visit it if you want it. You can get established titles to print and frame the certificate for you, or if you're really to rush, you can quickly print it off and get it framed yourself. Established titles also plants a tree with with every order. They work with the global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack with my link will be next to my plot within a few meters of walking. It really does make a great last minute gift for your loved ones. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now, plus if you use the code Kiana Doherty, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash Kiana Doherty to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring today's video. And back to the video. Eating insects really isn't a thing in the Western world. In fact, up until now, this is how it has been characterized. This one has been living in there a very, very long time. Ooh. Keep it down! There it is! Now I know various cultures all around the world enjoy eating insects, and I'm sure some of them genuinely taste great. Actually, the first thing I did was check to see if any bugs had Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval. <laughs> So just bite the belly. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yes. Gordon confirms some of them taste good, although not all of them. Este gorzano se llama Guaitampo. Ancestral. They're like giant caterpillars. Oh, bravo. Delicioso. <laughs> that clip's so funny because it's so inappropriate, but it's so genuine at the same time. <laughs> anyway, let's be clear here. The idea and the idea that I have an issue with is not that we'd be eating some insects, but that we'd be eating insects instead of meat. That is just... no. And here's why. The world's forests are a source of untapped food, according to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. Today, around 2 billion people choose to eat insects on a regular basis. That means one third of the population of the world is already eating insects. Side note, 2 billion people in the world eat bugs, and I'm one of them. 
Yeah, okay, frequent and occasional bug eating is common around the world, but do any cultures, do any groups of people subsist entirely off bugs as their main protein source by choice? Like how many bugs are people really eating per day? Because it doesn't seem to be that much. In most cultures, it seems to be a snack or an addition, not the main course. And there's really one main reason that humans and every other apex predator on the planet do not subsist entirely off bugs as their main and sole protein source. With the exception of fictional Simba for a few years there in The Lion King. Lions, tigers, bears, wolves, and even Komodo dragons, which is a lizard, dabble in insects just like humans. But none of them just eat insects. Why? Well, because it would be physically impossible for them to survive and thrive off of insect protein only. And it's no different for humans. Like me, you may have seen online, the crickets are supposedly much more protein dense than more traditional sources of meat, with many sources placing crickets at 65 plus grams of protein per 100 grams. But that number seems to be incorrect. Based on the very few studies available, crickets actually seem to clock in between 13.2 and 20 grams, lower than both chicken and beef. But let's actually just break that down a little bit here. Here's 100 grams of chicken breast, here is 100 grams of steak, and here is 100 grams of crickets. Let's say I'm trying to eat 140 grams of protein per day as a 5'8 female trying to lose weight and build muscle. That is equal to almost nine bags of crickets in one day. <laughs> now let's pretend you're a bodybuilder eating 250 grams of protein or whatever they eat. I don't know how much they eat. You're now looking at 15.5 bags of crickets per day. What? It's just not feasible. It just doesn't make sense. We're going to go from eating zero crickets to nine bags of crickets per day. Mm, it definitely tastes better than it smells. It does still taste residually of raid. And what this also means is that for crickets to work as a replacement for meat, they're going to have to be processed. You won't be eating bags of insects whole, but instead insect powder made by grinding down thousands of insects into a smooth flour and then dumped in pastas, protein bars, breakfast cereals, pizza doughs, TV dinners, cereals, and snack foods. Mmm, it's Indeed, many articles tout the solution to Western resistance to eating insects as making them into more palatable snack foods. Uh, food producers looking at ways in which you can incorporate insects into food and, and, and make them delicious for the Western palate. Because, as otherwise stated, people are pretty much totally disgusted and put off by the idea of eating insects, and therefore they must resemble insects as little as possible to gain mainstream acceptance. In other words, for an adult Westerner to begin consuming bugs, they'd need to consume more processed food, which sounds a little bit backwards considering the ultra processed food epidemic is causing a health crisis. From cancer to increased risk of heart disease or even early death, there are a lot of concerns about ultra processed foods that a lot of people eat. Even though in theory, eating a cricket exoskeleton and all might be the most whole food on the planet, in practice, it means wiping out a food we've been eating since our earliest days as a species, meat, and replacing it with yet another junk food product. If crickets need to be fried, sugared, or salted to gain our acceptance, they're not a solution to a food crisis. There's another part of our rotten food system we need to replicate to feed the world with insects. Industrial, factory, mass scale, farming. Up until this point, the cultures that enjoy eating insects have mostly just caught them in the wild. They are eating them in harmony with their environment. Farming insects on a mass scale would take a gigantic operation. And part of the reason it hasn't existed up until now is that you'd need a bit of technology to contain and rear bugs on that kind of scale. But if we're just repeating the same process for a different creature, don't we think that we may end up with some of the same issues? Cows and family farmers don't cause environmental issues. Profit-hungry, churn-and-burn corporations do. And that is who would be in charge of erecting our 
new food system if it were to go this way because they are the ones with the technology and the scale to turn a tiny cricket into enough food to feed the planet. To quote one study, the narrative of insect marketing as a panacea for climate, resource, and health challenges may be misleading. Sustainability may mistakenly be regarded as a property of organisms, while it may rather be a property of production systems based on mass production and monoculture. The existing destructive food system should not be replaced with equally harmful production methods for insect-based foods. Is it also not insane that banning meat and selling insects is being considered or even discussed before we talk about what the big boys, the ones who are really causing these issues, can do to help the planet. McDonald's is the biggest buyer by far of beef, pork, and second biggest buyer of chicken in the United States. Are we seriously talking about citizens eating insects before we ask McDonald's to shut its doors or start selling cricket burgers? Like, why are we talking about citizens eating insects before we ask Tyson or Cargill to change their business practices by investing in regenerative farming and taking a cut out of their profits to do so? Another thing that really, really bothers me about this entire thing is who is going to be eating these insects exactly? In this hypothetical scenario, even if all of us common folk worldwide agreed to only eat insects in solidarity to save the planet, we all already know that there are going to be some outliers that exempt themselves from this rule. I'm talking about the ultra-rich. Do we seriously think that Elon Musk Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos are going to partake in the bugs too? Or is that just for us lowly non-billionaires? You know these boys and their less famous equivalents will have their private flocks of the finest of meats reared in the most luxurious locations and with no expense spared on their quality. And I don't know about you, but I find that kind of fucked up. It gives me major Marie Antoinette, if they do not have meat, let them eat insects type of a vibe. There's no scenario in which meat just disappears off the planet. But in order to make a difference in the environment, according to these articles, we need to make it inaccessibly expensive to middle-class families and maybe even garden variety wealthy people. And that's just not progress to me. Actually, it kind of feels like a return to feudalism. Back to a time when the local aristocracy banned the peasants from hunting in the royal forests. And thus, they consumed mostly various forms of gruel and meat only on very special occasions. While their masters, of course, enjoyed only the finest fare the land had to offer. Not to mention this idea just rests on so many untested assumptions. Who knows what kind of diseases could arise from the industrial mass farming of insects? Who knows what the environmental impact of that would be? God forbid a horde of GMO locusts escape and decimate a rainforest or something. It's funny, I wrote that line and then I went and saw Jurassic Park and it literally occurred within the movie. <laughs> Not to mention all the environmental assumptions. Are we sure that banning meat and only selling insects is really going to even take a chunk out of the issue? You'd need so much data before you could make some sort of a prescription like that. And also realistically, how are you gonna get people to do this? Almost every article, particularly the research papers, were discussing the behavior change aspect. How might they get the Western public to accept eating insects? And I can tell you as someone who understands behavior change science, you'd need a miracle. That's, that's the tarantula. Oh, thanks for yeah! ah! Eat it, just eat the tarantula. It's like licking a dog. People don't change just because you tell them something is healthy or that it imparts some sort of environmental benefit. They're not going to start eating something they've never considered food before <laughs> and have actually associated with vermin, fear, or disease discussed, etc. There would really be no ethical way to get enough people on board with this to push it forward. And in fact, you would probably need some morally questionable governmental policies in order to nudge people in the right direction. There's always more than one solution to any problem, but I get the vibe that maybe this is the most profitable solution to this problem. Please let me know in the comments if you would be willing to eat bugs and only bugs to save the planet. Aww.